și Um, digital dentistry so we asked her to join us and um, have a lecture for us about this uh, uh, subject now let us uh, Uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmadian, are you here? Uh, uh, would you please uh, turn the uh, microphone of Dr. Ahmadian on? Hi, Dr. Said. Good morning. Yeah. Are, you, are you here? Yes. Are you here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let me. I'm so sorry. Please um, pardon me for the delay. Uh, it was a problem with connection. Um, That's fine. And. Um, uh, let me introduce you to our colleagues and audiences, and then we be um, honorably hear your uh, lecture. Uh, Dr. Ahmadian possesses an extensive educational, uh, educational background in prosthodontics. She earned an MS degree and certificate in oral and maxillofacial prosthodontics from Tehran University of Medical Sciences in Iran, as well as certificate in prosthodontics from NOVA Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, USA. Dr. Ahmadian holds board certificates from both the American Board of Prosthodontics and Iranian Board of Prosthodontics. Her um, diverse roles encompass academic and clinical practice, including positions as an assistant professor at the University of Chicago at Illinois and Nova Southeastern University. Additionally, she has served as an implant director of a predoctoral clinic at Nova Southeastern University. Currently, Dr. Ahmadian leads uh, the digital dentistry course in the pros uh, graduate prosthodontics clinic at UIC. In uh, just a few weeks, uh, she will be launching her private practice, specializing in advanced dental treatment, inshallah. So, Dr. Ahmadian, we are very happy to have you with us today. Uh, again, please pardon me for the uh, delay and um, the screen is yours. Um, have you shared your in Dr. Ahmadian? Um, sorry, it was my fault. I just turned okay. off my laptop somehow. <laughs> okay, good morning, okay. Dr. Okay. And it's an honor to be, you know, invited for this lecture. And I see so many familiar names. Um, I don't know how many of the audience are uh, residents. I, I hope my presentation is useful for the faculty. Um, they're present uh, and um, 
you know, I'm so happy to um, present Dr. And Can you speak up? Can you talk louder? Can I talk louder? Um, yeah. Oh, okay, now. Right now, right now. It's yeah, okay. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you, Dr. Ahmadiyan. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. It's good to see all of you again. It's 11.15 p.m. here, so everyone is sleeping, unfortunately. This is the as loud as I can go, but I'll do my best. Okay, um, is, I'm, I'm starting to share my screen. Okay, do you see my screen? Dr. Farid? Hello. Okay, um, I, my understanding is you can see my screen and I'm going to start my presentation. Um, if it's okay, you can give me thumbs up. You can even co uh, communicate with me through my cell phone because I have my cell phone right beside me. If you wanna text me anything, I can. I think I'm receiving your text better than the Zoom. Um, if you don't mind to send a thumbs up through WhatsApp, then I know I'm good to start. Okay, okay. Okay, so good morning, everyone. And today I'm going to talk about digital impressions and we are going to focus more on truth support restorations because nowadays, wherever we go, at least here um, in all the meetings, all the lectures are focused on implants, full mouth rehab, uh, using implant restorations and the digital workflows about implant restorations. And I thought um, we are prosthodontists. We are uh, the specialty uh, which... Usually we focus on uh, saving the teeth um, and it's worth to know the tricks and clinical tips about the scanning and having an accurate scan uh, for, for a simple, simple single crown. A little disclaimer is, oh, my presentation is frozen now. So for some reason, I don't know. Okay. See. The views expressed in this presentation are my own and do not represent the op opinions of my affiliated institution, which as Dr. Farid mentioned, I uh, work in UIC as a part-time faculty at this point and um, I teach digital dentistry there, even though my opinions are expressed in my institution as well, but they are my opinion. Here is a table of content for today's presentation. Um, we're going to have a short introduction and then we are going to dive in to the world of variables related to uh, the accuracy of digital impressions. Unfortunately, we won't have time to 
uh, talk about the after the scanning process, but I'll do my best to summarize before and during the scanning uh, process related variables related to these two steps. A little bit about me. I am from northwest part of Iran, um, a little city um, and uh, rich in culture, history, uh, nature. And uh, because of those, we have multiple museums. And one of the well-known monuments in my uh, city is the observatory of the city. And the name of the city is Maroge, if you don't know. Now, since 2020, I, um, I live in Chicago. Again, the city is rich in culture, nature, art, food, and diversity of the ethnicities who live here. And it's a fortunate to be uh, in the city. And um, I enjoy my time uh, walking, hiking, taking photos. You see the photos. This one is my flower bed. Um, which I take care of it during the summertime as long as the weather lets me. Okay, without further ado, let's dive in. When I uh, look at our uh, workflow and uh, our impressions, I see them as an artwork. And that's why you saw on the first slide, which I forgot to talk about it, um, the photo of the Artist, Art Institute in Chicago, which is one of the well-known um, museums in the city. And usually we have a million and a half annual visitors uh, in the museum. And um, today we are going to uh, have a virtual visit of the, some of the artworks in the museum, and I will try to use, take an advantage of those artworks and relate them to today's topic. And hopefully it helps you to remember some of these variables which we are going to discuss. So when we're talking about the artwork, Usually, we are dealing with different uh, genres of the art, and um, if you want to uh, consider our artwork, um, our digital impression as an artwork, um, it falls in realistic art uh, genre. What is realistic art uh, genre is, it's you are going to paint um, a painting, which is going to be a very close or exact representation of the object. So when we are scanning a tooth, we want our scan to be a 100% replication of the reality. Nothing smaller, nothing bigger, it's the exact same thing. So let's talk about a little bit about the accuracy of these um, artwork. In the world of art, maybe it's a little bit different than the digital impressions. If I wanna take the same example here, this is an art piece which is created with high precision and high trueness. It's exact the same object I have seen, so I have drawn. Unfortunately, I don't have that much talent to draw this, but the artist did that. If we want to talk about the second one, and the second one, it's even though it's very good art, but it's not the object the artist saw. So he used his imagination to draw this. So maybe in the field of digital dentistry and digital impression, it's useless. And this one is close to the main object, but slightly different. And this one is the one I draw, so it has nothing to do with the object. But let's, this, this was a joke, but let's go back to the digital impression and see how can we interpret the accuracy of a scan in the world of digital dentistry. If you have a scanner and you have a prep tooth, if you scan that tooth multiple times, and you end up with the same result, which is the exact representation of the tooth, then you have a scanner with good accuracy. And the accuracy means it is the exact same size of the tooth and dimensions, trueness, and it had been created multiple times which is precision. So your scanner is capable of creating 
uh, images very accurately. If you take another scanner and scan the same tube, and you scan multiple times, every single time you get the same result, but unfortunately that result is slightly distorted. It's smaller, it's wider, the surface is not representing the surface of the actual tube. Then on that case, your scanner doesn't have good trueness. Why? Because it's not re replicating the reality, but it has very high representation uh, precision because every single time it has the same error. We are not dealing with random error. And sometimes some of the scanners, um, when you scan with the these scanners, you get multiple results, different results in multiple scans. Sometimes it's narrower, sometimes it's wider, so sometimes it's accurate, okay? So um, you don't know um, what you're going to get on those scanners. And all the, luckily, the last uh, error is not going to happen in the world of digital dentistry because if a scanner is not capable of creating a true image or precise image, usually those scanners are not in the market. And if you end up buying one of, uh, buying in a scanner with this problem, uh, unfortunately, you wasted your money on a junk piece. So when we want to make a digital impression, what we are trying to gain is, um, a scan or image which has a high trueness and high precision. And sometimes the scanner is capable of doing this, but with, in the clinical situation, clinical setup, adding some variables will force our scanner to go through these categories and have some problems. And let's see what are these variables which can affect the accuracy of the scan. Us as a practitioner, we are the main variable for the accuracy of the scanner. And fortunately, this topic had been studied in multiple studies and most of them, they showed the same result. For example, in this specific study, which I uh, chose for the purpose of showing the idea of the practitioner matters, practitioner's experience matters. The result of the study showed uh, when you're using TRIOS 4 versus uh, prime scan as a beginner, imagine you don't have any experience in scanning, you will be able to get the good result, persistent result with your scanning after 11 scans. And when we compare that to prime scan, that is going to happen after your 14 scan. So what does this say? And if you compare these um, uh, two scanners, the other variable is how long it takes you to get comfortable with the scanner. Uh, apparently, I, I might disagree because of my personal experience and it might be biased because I am not a beginner when I uh, used prime scan. But apparently when you give the prime scan to um, a user with no experience, they are struggling to scan and it's taking them longer to scan compared to trio sport. So what does this say? It said when the scanner is not user-friendly at the beginning, it's going to take a little bit longer to um, get familiar with the scanner and get better results and uh, consistent result with the scanner. So I'm not going to leave the take home messages to the end because we are going to discuss multiple variables. After every um, factor we review, we are, I'm going to put a clinical tip, then it will uh, add up at the end. You will have a slide with all the variables we reviewed. So clinical tip is practice because practice is the only way you're going to be an expert with your intraoral scanner. And I always tell the residents, um, don't leave the practice to your uh, most important case. Practice with the simple case because when the case is not important, even if it takes 10 
attempts to get a good result, then you're learning on a case which you're um, you're not on the stress, you're not nervous, am I going to get good result or not? So one, the number one clinical tip uh, for getting an accurate intraoral scan or digital impression is uh, practice. Okay, after each clinical tip, we are going to go back to Art Institute of Chicago. And I chose Water Lilies, uh, one of the paintings of the Water Lilies series uh, from Monet. Um, and the reason I chose this one, uh, because uh, the first top um, oil painting is in Art Institute of Chicago. These are uh, located in the house in Metropolitan in New York Museum, uh, Metropolitan Museum in New York. And the reason I chose this art piece is because um, this collection is um, painted based on the um, lava garden Monet has in his house. And he um, painted 250 different uh, paintings based on that scene. And it is an excellent uh, example uh, to show how the light and the color interplay a role on the art on our um, on how we perceive the scene. How do we see the scene, even though it's the exact same scene? So let's take this to our art uh, piece. Let's see if the light affects our digital scans or not. How does digital in, mm, impression works? Digital impression is a combination of multiple steps. First, the scanner shines through the light through the object, which usually is the tooth. And then the light reflects, gets collected by a sensor, and then it will be analyzed in the software of the mm, system we have and it will reproduce the image it had seen in the mouth. Usually it's a prep tube, if it's an intraoral scan for a full arch or any object we are scanning. Different technologies have been used to do those calculation to transfer the information of the reflected light to recreating and simulating the object had been seen in the mouth by the intraoral scanner. Triangulation is one of the old technologies that have been used. And I heard from Dr. Farid, you have um, I, I made it I-500 and it's technology been used on that scanner. Here at UIC, we use um, parallel confocal imaging technology and um, which works based on uh, parallel confocal imaging technology. We also have prime scan, which uses the 3D uh, motion, a combination of video and uh, triangulation plus parallel confocal imaging. So uh, Prime Scan has a combined technology for capturing the images and simulating the scanned object. So is this the only light source, the light source of the scan, uh, scanner we have is the only light source we have in our operatory? Obviously not. We have different light sources in our operatories, the ceiling light, the light uh, from the ambient uh, light from the outside or natural light, the headlight, we have the um, light usually we have on our, um, uh, our uh, magnifiers and then the light, extra light sometimes we have in uh, the operatory. But the, what is the effect of these extra lights on the accuracy of the scan? Do they affect the accuracy of the scan? And the answer is yes. Again, this is one of the subjects which was studied in multiple studies. And nowadays we know yes, the light can affect the accuracy of the scan. One of the first studies looked at this matter was uh, the study I just uh, cited, and they 
change the uh, the brightness of the operatory for scanning and in in a um, different way and the numbers you see here is the lux number for the brightness of the room the scanning was happening and the scanner had been studied and this study was prime scan and they realized for the scanner listed in this study 1000 lux works the best to get the better result for scanning but how about the other scanners other scanners were the subject of the study in different studies and i know you have met it i have 500 and it's similar to prime scan if you're using this scanner make sure your operatory is around this brightness so going below or above, it's gonna drastically affect the accuracy of the scan. And it's related to the technology these scanners have been used. And we see in the, the scanning, the light is um, playing an important role and keeping these extra light to making the area too bright is going to help us to get an accurate result. Usually TRIOS 4 is around the same number, which we have here in UIC, TRIOS 3, TRIOS 4. Most of the scanners are falling in uh, this brightness uh, range. But how can we check the brightness of the scanner, uh, the, the operatory? We can use LUX meter. Well, I don't know you have LUX meter in your clinic or not, then they are not expensive, but we are dentists, we don't carry all these devices in our operatories, right? The good news is you can download applications on your smartphone to measure the lux number of your operatory and make sure it is falling within the range, which is um, good for your scanners. So the clinical tip from this uh, variable is, please control the amount of the light you have in your operatory, don't forget about um, this variable and how uh, drastically it can change the scan result. And remember, I when the first study came out uh, at the beginning, I remember here I had an assistant. He used to even turn off the light uh, from the ceiling light. But it's not needed. And we know if we make the operatory too uh, dark, um, it's not going to help to get a good result. So measure the lux number and make sure you're within the range. Okay, let's go back to our museum and virtual tour. We know the humidity and temperature are not good for the artwork. So I wanna take you to the conservation center of the uh, Art Institute. And it's one of the advanced conservation centers and they um, repair all the damages might happen to the art pieces, especially when they get it from the collectors, when they buy it from the uh, private collectors. And in, in, in our houses, we don't have all the technology to protect these art pieces. So uh, conservation uh, videos and the conservatory uh, videos are some of the uh, popular videos for the people they enjoy art. My daughter likes art. I like art. And usually we sit down and watch them on YouTube. And it's, you know, fun uh, thing to do when you want to spend a few times and get your brain off from any topic. You, you watch an art piece to be repaired and it's interesting. But let's see how does the humidity not the temperature, because I couldn't find any study about temperature, but humidity will affect the accuracy of the scan. Does it have any uh, effect in our, uh, the, in, uh, on the accuracy of the digital impression? So in this study, it's interesting. The, the effect of humidity is not only studied on the accuracy of the scan, they uh, test it, does it affect the scanning time? Does it affect the number of images we are taking to get a good scan? And the result is interesting. 
I'm going to share the results in the, on the next slide, but here is the setting of the study. The TRIO3 uh, was used for this purpose, and they simulated the humidity 50%, 70%, 80%, and 90%. And it was um, taken based on the another study, which they uh, studied on the humidity level of the mouth when we have rubber dam or we don't have, and how does it affect the bonding? It was a totally different study, but because the humidity level was reported on that study, they took that report and applied and this field. They used the scan pattern recommended by the company, and these are the measurements they had done for this part of the study. The result shows when we have a humid environment, the, uh, we have linear deviation in our scan. And you see the box plot is wider here compared to a little bit dried environment. This is a uh, precision. It's, it's not the trueness. Trueness was it representing exactly the same object, but precision was how uh, accurate the, in different scans uh, do we get the same result or not. So we see the humidity is increasing the, 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 or reducing the precision of the scan. When it comes to the time, it takes longer to get a scan. And when it comes to the number of photograms, it takes more images and it takes uh, more effort to take more images to get a same result. Okay, so the clinical tip is, then check the humidity of the environment, keep it uh, dry, but we cannot keep the mouth dry. Uh, what they recommended in this study was you can blow dry the tooth while you are scanning and keep the suction in. These are going to reduce the humidity level of the mouth and you are going to get better results regarding the accuracy of the scan. Okay. Let's back to our virtual tour. Um, and I'm sure you are familiar with this cream, uh, which is um, oil uh, painting by Edward Monk. Edward Monk is well known for recreating his own um, artwork at the different uh, ages of his uh, lifetime. And uh, he he is uh, famous for using the paint and the brushwork, the pattern he uses on the brushwork to convey the feeling, for example, anxiety on the face of the figure in this image. And unfortunately, we don't have this one you know, here in Chicago, but the uh, center uh, art piece is, um, housed in Chicago Art Institute, and um, it is a stereolithographic version of his original work. They are all done by him, but the different medium, and the one on the right is done by um, Cryon. Okay, so now let's see how does brushwork affects the accuracy of the scan. What is the brush when we are taking a digital impression? You know, these are all my imagination to help you to remember these variables. I imagine the scanner is my brush. So does it affect how I'm moving this brush in the mouth and the, the, the way I'm moving the, the scanner or the brush in the mouth, will that affect the accuracy of the scan? And again, this is one of the well-studied subjects in the field of digital impression. I tried to find the one related to your scanner. And uh, in this study, three different methods of scanning uh, had been studied. One of them was the one recommended by the company. The others were different scan patterns recommended by other companies, but they wanted to test. And um, just like the other studies, it shows the scan uh, pattern affects the accuracy of the scan. Even though these scans are statistically significant, but the difference was around six to seven micron, and that's why they are not clinically relevant. But when I read these papers, I always uh, discuss it with my residents this way. 
Remember, this is only one variable. And here in this presentation, at least I'm going to list uh, multiple variables. When we compile all the effect of the different variables in one scan, these minor changes matters. It's like a one drop of color in a bucket. And if you add 100, you're going to definitely see the change in the color of the water. Water. So it's better to control these variables as much as possible. OK. Um, this is another study looked at the scanning speed, scanning pattern, and the tip size of the intraoral scanner. It's interesting, not many of the intraoral scanners carry tips with different size. Um, the one I'm familiar, which I never used, is Emerald Plan Makeup, and it comes with two different size of scan tip. I know some of the scanners from China, they have different scan tip. Uh, unfortunately, I never had a chance to use them. So let's see if our scanner has a different scan tip size. Does it affect the accuracy of our scan or not? And the other uh, variable was studied in, in this study uh, research was the speed of scan. They took uh, a full arch scan in one and a half minute, two and a half minute, and three and a half minute. And they checked the accuracy of these multiple scans. And also they looked at the different pattern of the scan and see how does it affect the accuracy of the scan. Here is the result. And we see uh, the size of the scan can affect the accuracy of the uh, scan, digital impression. So when we use smaller tips, it's okay now. Uh, like, are you are you okay? Um, I hear Dr. Ferry is talking. I'm not sure I am okay to proceed, or you want to? Okay, I'm going to move on. Hopefully, you can hear me. Okay, and we know, um, and you see the effect of the speed of the scan, which was one and a half minute, two and a half minute, and three and a half minute. It can affect the accuracy of the scan. The result of this study showed when you are scanning too quick, it is going to reduce the accuracy of the scan, and it depends on. Uh, Unfortunately, we are not going to discuss it today, but it, it is related to the software of the scanner, how it's stitching these images together, how quick this process is happening. So we need to keep a reasonable result, a reasonable speed while we are scanning. We cannot go too quick and we, we shouldn't go too slow because you know the effect of going too slow, but it adds to the number of the images. And um, because the accuracy of the scan is the average of all the images you took, so you're going to end up with less accurate scans if you're going too slow. So we need to find a sweet spot for scan speed with our scanner and keep uh, the same pattern with our uh, intraoral scan. I thought we should uh, talk about this uh, matter as well. When we're talking about the scan tip, um, we're talking about the size of the actual um, the, the tip, right? How wide that scan tip is. But um, when on, on the, the previous study, they haven't mentioned anything about capture books. But the capture box of the scanner is different. The size of the capture box is different than the scanner tip. OK, so our scan tip could be smaller or bigger than a specific you know, scan tip if we compare them. But the capture box sometimes has nothing to do with the size of the actual scan tip. 
For example, here, um, the author, which you can see the reference for this website, compared the tree shape uh, intraoral scanners tip to itero, and we see the scan, scan uh, tip is smaller, but when we compare the capture box, which is the area is going to be lit up by the scanner is bigger than the itero. So um, this is a tricky one when we are reading, when we are reading the papers, we need to pay attention to this tiny uh, variable. And um, I wanted to explain why uh, smaller scan tip make, is good and at the same time, it's not good. It is having a smaller scan tip is uh, an advantage. Why? Because we can reach out to the distal of the second molar easily without making our patient to gag or making our patient to um, open too wide, which is sometimes impossible and painful for them, right? But um, if we have a smaller capture box. See, I'm not talking about the smaller tip. If we have a scanner with a smaller capture box, the area which lits up by the scanner, we are going to need multiple images to capture the same surface area. And now the software is going to stitch these images to each other and it's going to be a higher risk for um, accuracy of the scan if those stitching is not seamless. So when you're scanning um, a prep tooth, making a digital impression, consider using the recommended scan pattern for your scanner and keep in your mind the way you're moving your brush matters and it can affect the accuracy of your scan. The other variable is uh, scan distance. The scan distance has been studied in some um, research, and here I listed, I um, cited one study which recently published, and they looked at the angle you are holding the scanner toward the scan object and the distance, you're holding the scanner to the uh, scanned object. Unfortunately, this image doesn't show the distance, but they moved this scanner away from the scanner, uh, the, from the, the object. And the result and the distance they studied was zero millimeter, two millimeter, and four millimeter, and three different, or four different scanners had been studied. And the result showed, yes, the angle you're holding your scanner matters, the distance matters. So regarding the TRIO score, which is the scanner we uh, use uh, here at UIC, we better to have um, our scanner at 15 degree toward the tooth. Unfortunately, I 500 was not a part of this study, but you know, maybe this is a good research topic for you to check your scanner and see what distance is a good distance for a scanner and um, what angle gives you a better result. But because it's made based on the same company, maybe you can use the information from I-700, but keep in your mind I-700, the scanning technology is different than I-500, at least based on what I know. Okay. This is another study which uh, they used a very innovative and creative method to uh, measure the, the, to keep the specific distance from the scan object. And you see they printed an object with 2.55 millimeter and 7.5 millimeter, and they measured different distances on the scanner. And they came up with the same result. And the result shows when you are increasing or getting too close to your scanner based on the, to the object, based on the scanner you're using, you're going to get different result. Okay, the previous one was about uh, trueness and precision and the combination of these are the accuracy and it matters, um, the scan distance matters about uh, when we are talking about the accuracy of the scan. 
Okay. I wanted to, you know, I tried to find an art piece in Art Institute of Chicago for the variable I'm going to talk, but unfortunately I couldn't find it because I like this uh, artist. Um, he uses the light and the shadow uh, in a very creative way uh, to create uh, her art pieces. And you see it just creased on a paper, piece of paper, how interestingly he can lit up that uh, piece of paper to um, create uh, uh, faces with different profiles. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any of her work in Chicago, but this is in New York and um, one of actually private sectors, not in a museum. What I'm trying to discuss for the next few slides is about the prep. When you're prepping a tooth and we want to scan the tooth um, and use digital impression technology, should we consider any uh, change in the way we are prepping? And let me spoil it, the answer is yes, but let's see how does it affect. In this study, different preps, inlay, onlay, and partial coverage, and full coverage crowns were prepped, and they had been scanned. But the interesting um, variable was added beside the type of the prep was existence of the adjacent tooth. tooth. They tried to scan this model, then they unscrewed these middle teeth from the typodont and they scanned it again to see if the accuracy of the scan will be affected if we have the adjacent tooth. We know from our experience, it makes it difficult when we have the adjacent tooth and we are trying to scan a prep with a specific configuration, especially when we have box on the on into proximal surface. Okay, let me check the time, okay. So um, the result of that study showed that, um, yes, the geometry of the prep affects the accuracy of the scan and the scanners get affected by this variable differently. So let's see how does it affect when we have different type of uh, restorations. In this study, you see different type of restorations have been prepped on a typodont, and they try to scan these preps with different scanners. And MEDIT 500 was one of the scanners tested in this study. And the results showed, yes, it affects when you are scanning a prep with a complex, um, Ge uh, geometry, uh, the scanner is going to struggle to have an accurate scan compared to uh, conventional impression, which is this one, okay? But mm, fortunately, these, change, these differences are not uh, that much which affects the accuracy of the or marginal fit of the final restoration. So we are going to see some struggle in our scans when we are scanning um, the prep with a box roofs, but it is uh, not in, to the degree it's gonna affect the final result. But what did I say before? Remember, these variables are going to add up. If we have a little bit humid, uh, humidity like more than we should have in the mouth and the light is not calibrated, this uh, variable is going to affect the accuracy of the uh, digital impression. And this is again another study. Um, they affect the, they uh, check the uh, surface of the accuracy and effect of the the configuration of the prep and how does it affect the accuracy of the impression or digital impression on the margins and the surface of the scan. 
And here is the result. We see when we are moving to a less complex uh, scans, we are getting better results compared to a more complex uh, scan, uh, more complex preps. And uh, this study was Trios was one of the scanners had been studied here, and it was one of the scanners which didn't get affected that much by the uh, type of prep. So I would say take home message from this study uh, was when you are selecting a intraoral scanner to purchase, maybe you should. Uh, go with a scanner, even if you are going to pay a little bit more, go with a scanner which doesn't get affected by the type of the prep. And it doesn't give you hard time if you are adding a box to your prep and for some reason you'd like to add that box and you don't want to make a conventional impression. And this is another study. They looked at the width of the box and the depth of the prep on the occlusal area and not this area, okay? And they wanted to know these factors are going to affect the accuracy of the scan or not. And the results showed yes, when we have wider scan, you're going to have a better result. And when we have deeper, um, deeper uh, cavities, it is a little bit more difficult for our intraoral scanner to scan. And you see the areas which are getting a little bit smaller. And we know when this one gets smaller, it means our uh, fit is going to be affected uh, when we are trying our final restoration. And the uh, next study, uh, they uh, came up with the idea of, okay, now we know um, uh, the scan tip can get affected by the uh, type of the prep, but how, about, but how about the same prep, just different configuration inside the same prep. In this uh, study, they added Smith uh, for an onlay uh, prep. They added only box and they made a dome shape with no Smith and uh, no uh, box uh, interproximal boxes and they scanned these uh, preps. And the result was interesting and a little bit predictable. Yes, the complexity of the prep affects the accuracy of the scan. And imagine your scanner is here. And we knew from previous study, which the distance of the scanner from the object matters and here, when we go to the gingival margin, of course, we are adding to the distance and it's affecting the um, scan result. But because here we are adding a little bit more shadows from these walls and creating more undercuts, the result is even more um, destructive. It's away more further from the reality and the trueness is really getting affected when we are dealing with this type of configuration. So that's why if you are prepping the tooth and you are relying on your scanner to make your final restoration, maybe it's not a bad idea to uh, block all these undercuts uh, with composite or not to create any retention for our final restoration and use adhesive to bond your restoration instead of making any retentive groups. So take home message is consider less complexity preparation for easier scanning access on your um, prep. Okay, let's move on to our uh, next topic. And before that, let's go to our virtual tour. The art piece, which I shared on the left side of the uh, screen, done by uh, Turner, and he is well known for priming his uh, canvas with different material. Usually, uh, gesso is the material uh, artists use to prep their canvas for any artwork, but he uh, 
uh, used to try different material. For example, in this art piece, which the uh, private uh, collector has it, and he used a ground oil uh, to uh, highlight the translucency of the color he was trying to achieve on the sky part of the painting, okay? So let's see how can we prep our canvas uh, while we are making our art piece and our canvas is the mouth and how can we prep that? We knew from the previous studies, the humidity matters, okay? But in this study, we uh, tested how does the, the, the surface, um, the coated surface on the prep tooth affects the accuracy of the scan. So they coated the prep tooth with saliva and water and they tested. They realized that um, when we have saliva, because it's thick, the inaccuracy of the scan is worse than when we have only water on the tooth. And when we blow dry uh, the area and then scan, you're going to get better results, which is very similar to the result we had with another study uh, regarding the humidity. But in the humidity, uh, the number of the scans we are taking, the time we are taking to achieve a good scan was the main reason for inaccuracy of the scan. Here, we have one more uh, factor we should consider and we should understand how it plays a role in accuracy of the scan. And I'm sure if you understand that, next time you're not going to ignore any saliva, any blood uh, droplet on the margin of your prep. Imagine the light shines through this way to spot P2. And it's going to, if there is no water, it is going to reflect right away to the scanner. And the scanner here will realize, okay, the light went this way and came back. So this is the spatial vectors for spot P2. But when we have water, we know the fraction of the light is going to be the different because of the difference ratio between the air and saliva. Now, the, scan, the light is going to, when reaches the interface of the saliva and the air, it is going to bend, okay? And the scanner doesn't know we have water here. Now, scanner miscalculates the P1 as a spot the light came coming from. But the reality is, no, the light is coming from P2. The saliva is causing this bending in the light beam. So this is the way uh, the this is the way our scan uh, result can be affected by having contamination on the margins. While we are in this uh, area of uh, prep tooth, which is margin, let's look at the location of the finish line. Location of the finish line matters. That's um, the fact we know we shouldn't go really sub G, but let's see uh, how does it affect different uh, scanners. Here you see different scanners been studied um, and the tooth had been prepped half super gingivally and half base sub gingival. And you see these areas are the subgingival part of the prep, and not all the scanners can give you the same result. Unfortunately, again, um, MEDIT was not studied in this study, but TRIOS uh, was studied. And even though TRIOS is one of the accurate scanners, it still it struggles with having a good result for scanning. And these are the closer view of the scan. And you see this is one of the best scan results we see here, right? This is uh, some commercial initial scanners. This is not intro scanner, but the rest, you see how the subgingival prep can affect the accuracy of your scan. So keep in your mind, if your scanner is not functioning well on sub-G preps, 
then don't prep subgingival, or if you prep, find a way to retract the tissue or use conventional method to making an impression. So consider super, uh, super gingival margins and efficient way of isolation to keep the area dry. And I would say retraction as well. Okay, so now we know um, we have so many variables affects the accuracy of the scan. We considered all of them and still we don't have the good result. Usually when your uh, scanner is acting, it's better to calibrate your scanner. Even if it's not acting, it's better to calibrate your scanner. Um, this matter had been, this had been uh, recommended by the companies. Scan, um, calibrate your scanner. But it hadn't been studied in different studies. I found only one study. Oh, the slides are a little bit moved. Okay. Uh, but you will see, let me move on to the next slide. Yeah. Um, it, it had been studied in this uh, research. Um, I know this, that the publication is not a well-known and a qualified P in a journal, um, but they uh, looked at this variable uh, for a prime scan because prime scan has three different sleeves to put on the scan tip and uh, take a scan. Their result show that if you take, um, you use any of these sleeves, your scan result is the same. And if you unpack, oops, if you unpack your scan, uh, the tip and you scan it, the result is similar to you sterilize it 25 times and 50 times. And usually those tips are recommended to be used only 50 times after 50 times of, um, sterilization, you need to replace them. And uh, generated a scanner by the different uh, scanners, um, calibrated and non-calibrated was similar. But remember, this is prime scan. It's different than TRIOS 4. And I don't know. We have TRIOS 4. Unfortunately, we don't have TRIOS 5 because TRIOS 5 doesn't require a calibration. Most of the scanners, they require calibration. If your scanner requires calibration, you better to calibrate it until you're sure calibration doesn't matter. But if it didn't matter, company wouldn't recommend calibrating. If still you calibrate it and your scanner is not scanning properly, you better look at the mirror of the scan tip. If you have any mark from the sterilization or finger mark, you better to wipe them with a microfiber cloth and make sure that area is a spotless because these spots are going to affect the image which this uh, scan tip is taking and it's going to distort the uh, scan result, right? So we need to have a spotless mirror on our scan tip. And if it's scratched, maybe it's not a good, a bad idea to replace these scratched mirrors or replace the tip if they are one use. Sorry about this. Okay, so make the calibration a routine step in your workflow and follow the recommended sterilization steps to get the best use of your scan tip. Okay, let's go back to our virtual tour, which we are almost there to finish. And here uh, it shows, again, um, it shows how much I like the conservation <laughs> repair. Uh, it shows a conservator looking at the art piece, the red armchair by Picasso, to measure the change of the color because if they see any change in this, they need to take back the art piece to the conservatory and start repairing them. Okay, so um, that was the closest <laughs> art topic I found for the next variable, which is scan eight. We know nowadays our scanners, they don't need scan aid to have a scan, but uh, do we uh, use them nowadays? 
The answer, my answer is yes. Sometimes we need to use these scan aids. Don't be afraid of using those scan aids, which could be a spray or it could be a uh, liquid and you can brush it on the tooth in a specific situation, okay? So here there is a study. They uh, looked at using these scan aids and scanning an inlay, onlay, and crown and see how does it affects the result of um, the scanning. When we are using the uh, scan aid for scanning an inlay, unfortunately, they didn't compare uh, if we use it or we don't use it. They compared different type of scan aids. They noticed that when we're using a liquid one or IP, we are getting better result compared to Vita. Um, so, and it was the same thing when we had uh, an onlay or a bridge. So maybe uh, we should look at our scan aids, even if it's powder or it's a liquid, and search on PubMed and see if there is any study to show how good this scan aid is. And if you're using one of these scan aids, so it's maybe better to switch to this type of scan aid compared to Vita. I, uh, now they, now we, we ordered this scan aid in our clinic, but we used to have this one. So um, after reading the paper, we realized, okay, sometimes we need to use the scan aid, then let's use the one which is going to give us the better result. And on that study, the way justified the result was the tip of the scan and spray was different for these two scan aids. And you see the nozzle has a different size. So these are affecting the amount of powder is sprayed on the surface of the tooth. And obviously the chemical composition of these uh, scan uh, sprays are different. So the coating we are getting on the tooth surface is different based, uh, using these two different sprays. Now we have one study. If you want to trust that one study, maybe you better stay away from Vita for now until we have more evidence. Okay, again, this is another study by the same group looking at the effect of the scan aid material regarding the time and uh, efficiency, of, um, accuracy of the scan tips. And the results show time-wise it's more efficient and accuracy-wise they are more efficient as well. Again, the same group looking at the scan aid um, accuracy of the scan, but from different point of view. We are looking at the accuracy of the scan when we have a restoration in the mouth. And does it matter if we have a translucent restoration or opaque restoration? These are the different restorations they made and they put on this model to scan, okay? So what are they trying to um, achieve is when we are using uh, when we are scanning uh, an object or a mouth full of restorations, does it matter if we have translucent restoration or not? The answer is yes, it does matter. And the more translucent um, restoration is going to be less accurate if we don't use a scan aid and it's going to take even longer to scan, okay? So if you're dealing with a mouth uh, full mouth rehab and you want to change one of the crowns, maybe it's not a bad idea to use the scan aid. And the reason, the way they justified the result of this study was because more translucent object, the light when the light shines through the surface of those objects, it's not gonna reflect from the surface. It penetrates, goes a little bit inside and then gets reflected. And of course it gets even deviated and that's how it affects the accuracy of the scan. So don't be afraid of using scan aid, but don't abuse it. Use it as less as possible. Don't make a thickness with your scan aid on the surface. And I found this 
an interesting uh, research as well. They looked at the um, these scan aids from a different point of view. Um, are they ha hazardous uh, material to the staff with which they are using these uh, sprays in, in the lab and in the clinic? And unfortunately, the answer is yes. Um, and unfortunately, they didn't mention about the brands they had tested, but they mentioned uh, they tested three different sprays and all three of them, uh, the particles were found in the droplets of the you know, users and uh, in the conclusion, uh, in the introduction of the uh, paper, you can see they mentioned only one study had been studied these sprays beside this one. And uh, maybe we need more regulation regarding these sprays while you are using them. Um, you put on your mask because sometimes we use them in the lab. So don't forget, you can end up having them in your lung and you don't want those in your lung. And if you're using it in patient's mouth, maybe keeping high volume suction in patient's mouth is not a bad idea. So the clinical tip is use a scan aid if it's needed, don't abuse it. So these are all the clinical tips uh, from my presentation today. And I believe that was the last variable. Yep, um, my presentation regarding the variables is over. I know um, my time is short. Uh, I'm going to start showing you a few clinical cases. Uh, which I took from the clinic. These are undergrad cases, uh, not postgrad cases, because usually in postgrad we don't deal with single prana. I try to find cases from our UG clinic. Um, and I saved the x rays related to these scans. And unfortunately, somehow I lost those x rays and I don't, didn't have the name of the patient to go back and get the x rays. But I know what happened after these scans, then I'll let you know. Okay, let's look at the first scan. Um, this is a prep, um, which is not bad, but look at the isolation, look at the tissue uh, retraction uh, in this case. So most probably this is not part of the prep, right? It's saliva and somehow the scanner considered it um, part of tooth. So you see the subgingival prep on this side and how inaccurate that part of the scan could be because of the lack of good um, retraction. So when you're dealing with a subgingival tissue, which you are not capable of retracting, maybe digital impression is not a good idea. I went back to the patient's chart and I looked at the, I, I saved it. I had a screenshot, unfortunately, I don't have it now. And this uh, crown were never ended up being delivered and they have to redo the impression and they ended up making a conventional impression, not a digital impression. Okay, let's look at the next scan. This scan, um, all the margins are standing above the tissue and they uh, delivered this crown, if I remember right, but look at the uh, rough surface on the on the uh, prep tooth, uh, look at the undercuts. You don't need to have all these sharp line angles on a digital scan because they're playing in a negative way uh, toward the accuracy of your scan. So it's better to make your scan a little bit smoother, and get rid of all the undercuts if you want to get better result for your scan. This one is an interesting one. When I looked at this scan, I was curious, really curious to go back and check patient's chart and see if they delivered this crown, uh, this um, inlay or not. Because it has all the not to do <laughs> uh, variables on the prep. We have deep box, they are narrow, we have isthmus, we have 
um, on the cut. We have sharp line angles. And unfortunately, the answer to my question was, nope, they didn't end up delivering this uh, inlay and they, re, uh, they modified their prep before uh, delivering the crown. And to show not always we do crappy work in uh, our school, <laughs> this is one of the good uh, scans. I intentionally took those as an example because I wanted to show how uh, the variables we discussed in previous slides can apply to the clinic and hopefully it helps you to remember those variables. Okay, and this is, I believe, the last the scan. Um, and this one, um, unfortunately, this crown had been delivered. And uh, you see on the x-ray, one of the margins was not sealed. And because patient doesn't have any problem, they ended up monitoring the, the tooth. But um, I, I'm surprised this crown fit on the tooth because look at these irregularities on the tooth surface. I don't know if it's a saliva or it's the way they prep the tooth, but you know, um, it was delivered and I was surprised. Okay, I'm going to uh, finish my presentation with one of my favorite art piece from Art Institute of Chicago, which I didn't have time to talk about why do I like this art piece because it's directly related to intraoral scanning. And this is the inside of the Art Institute of Chicago. And this is one of the nice paintings um, we have in the art in the museum. And uh, even though it's painted, I don't know, 150 years ago, but it's very uh, vital when you stand in front of it, you feel you're standing there and you're part of the scene. Okay, again, this is another uh, work, uh, art piece from Kumi Yamashita, um, which I shared another scan, uh, uh, another slide about his uh, work and the name was Shadow. So uh, please um, feel free to unmute yourself if you have any question, ask the question. But with that being said, my presentation is over and hopefully you enjoyed your virtual tour of Art Institute of Chicago and the journey through making an accurate impression. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmadian. It was very great. It was comprehensive. You uh, you answered many of the questions. Um, um, so I want to know your undergraduate students use uh, scanners and do uh, inlay onlays and um, full crown uh, ceramic full crowns. Yes, Dr. Ahmadian. Yes, yes, yes. yes. They um we have. Um, I, I don't work honestly in UG clinic. So what I'm saying is based on what I know uh, from one of my colleagues, okay? Because she is the director of the cat cam course for um, undergrad clinic. We call it UG clinic here, UG clinic. And um, they have a special clinic for digital. So I believe the students are required to take a rotation on that uh, clinic and um, they scan their cases. I'm not sure all the faculty are comfortable scanning or not, but um, I know on that clinic they scan. And the school I was before uh, in Nova Southeastern University. Uh, on that clinic, UG clinic of Nova Southeastern University, um, all, here it's a comprehensive, it's a little bit different than uh, dental school uh, training in Iran. It's not a block system, it's a comprehensive uh, treatment system here. I don't know if it's changed in Iran or not. My time was block system. Um, so all the teams, which they have a team leader, um, they have a scanner and they uh, scan their cases as much as possible. 
Okay, and um, another question. Uh, imagine that we have a post core, a metal post core, and we want to scan it uh, on the tools. Uh, does it matter? Does it, ma does it make any um, problem for us to scan post -core, metal post core on a tooth? Or amalgam? Okay, metal, amalgam, anything which shines the light, that reflects the light different than the tooth structure. Of course, it's going to affect the accuracy of your scan, but as I said, don't be afraid of using uh, scan aid spray. Oh, okay. So in this situation, it's better to spray yes. it. To I, spray. I rather to spray. And the reason I spray, and this is a specific one, with the, the material with more translucency, I spray because I want the, line, the light to reflect from the surface. I don't want the light to penetrate inside the uh, structure, the crown or inlay, only, whatever it is. But for the metal, because we are usually, usually when we are dealing with the post, because we prepped it and it's too shiny, sometimes we take our time and effort, polish them. So they are too shiny. Use your uh, air abrasion to make the surface matte. Don't have that high polish shine surface. It helps to get better result. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't want, uh, if you don't have intraoral uh, air abrasion, you don't want to touch it with your bird, you're afraid you're going to remove more, then I, I would, I personally would spray the uh, surface because it's going to help us to get better reflection and not to struggle with uh, getting an accurate scan. Because when we struggle, yes, eventually we are going to scan the tube. Uh, it's not impossible, but you're adding to the time plus the number of the images you are taking. Now, the final result is the average of all the images you took so it is going to affect the accuracy of your scan in a negative way. So why should we even risk uh, getting inaccurate scan and struggle for taking in a scan? Um, spraying makes it easier and more accurate. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmadian. I, uh, it, uh, it was uh, very great. And th uh, thank I you for getting- I try to limit myself to all uh, clinical points as you, asked me and hopefully you know everyone enjoyed and I tried to add a little bit of you know art in it because I enjoy <laughs> going Thank you there. so much you you took us to the museums in the U.S. and also to the uh, scanning yeah. era yeah. and um, uh, officially our um, meeting is over but I want you to see uh, your colleagues <laughs> here Dr. Mirmahmad Rezai, Dr. Khoshman Rezai, Dr. Nam, Dr. Mar Bebina. Everybody says that how you, uh, why is this in English? <laughs> but I, your English is so good and I think it's like Persian. <laughs> so it was very good. Dr. Nofa. Salam. We are speaking. Salam. We are speaking. Salam. Salam. I can't, I can't convey my emotions in English. I have to speak Farsi. <laughs>